Hello, and welcome to our podcast, Where the Dark Corners Are. Hello, hello. I am Vina, and I am your Dark Travels hostess. Tonight, we have a Serial Killers with Sierra. Yeah. Episode. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So, it's actually kind of been a minute. It has been a little bit. And it's your first 2023 episode. It's my first one of the year. And we're starting off with... A situation in Australia. Oh, uh, yeah. This dude's a case and a half. Okay. <laughs> so tonight we have an episode on a Mr. Mark Brandon Chopper Reed. Chopper? Chopper is the nickname. Wow. Yeah. They said that out loud. Right? Well, he got the nickname when he was a kid from okay. a cartoon. Because so it's it not, looks tacky. Yeah. So it's not because of the murder murders. Right. But from a cartoon. Okay. I don't know. Must be an Australian thing. I guess. Who knows? All right. So, Mr. Reed was born on November 17th, 1954, to a former Army and World War II veteran, Keith Reed, of Irish descent, and a mother who was a devout Seventh-day Adventist. So, religious lady. Woo. Yeah. He was placed in a children's home for the first five years of his life. Wow, why? Uh, I don't think his parents could afford to have him. Oh. Yeah, one of those situations. He was bullied at school saying that by the age of 15, he had been on the losing end of several hundred fights, and that his father, usually on his mother's recommendation, beat him often as a child. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so they put him in a children's home for the first five years, took him back out of it, and then just beat him. Didn't bond with him? Nope. And then just... Yep, and then he got in fights in school, and got his ass whipped, and then he got his ass whipped at home. The cycle was endless. Yes. Oh. I Um, mean... You still don't, that's not a pass for killing people. No, it's not an excuse, but it's kind of like a stepping stone into it, I guess. I I don't know what to say. Because (laughs) honestly, I, I really hate when you have, when you're watching a show and there's a Mm douchebag and suddenly the TV show people decide to give the douchebag a sad backstory. Right. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. We all have had rotten shit happen. Oh, yeah. I, I Don't get me started. <laughs> but it doesn't give you a pass to be a douche. No. That's why, like, I hated, uh, what was it? Oh, when Netflix did the series of 13 Reasons Why. Jesus Christ, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. That is literally exactly yep. what I'm talking about. Because I've read the book. In the book, it doesn't go over their backstories. Because <sighs> they're meant to be douchebags. <laughs> I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. And then he got like a family. Yeah. Ugh, no. I, I, that's th- why I refuse to watch the series. That's so disgusting. I have to tell you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm sorry. Well, it's a total side, side, <laughs> side trip. Side trip. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Tangents. He was made a ward of the state by the age of 14 and was placed in several mental institutions as a teenager. He was made a ward of the state by age 14 and was placed in several mental institutions as a teenager, where he stated he underwent electroshock therapy. Now, that actually doesn't surprise me. No. But, so his family only had him for nine years. Yeah. And he just got his ass beat everywhere. Yep. Okay. When he was still young, Reed was already an accomplished street fighter and the leader of the Surrey Road Gang, which was a notorious reputation for violence. Well. Because why not? Right. Well, not only that, I mean, it kind of sounded like he had no soft place. No, not at all. He began his criminal career by robbing drug dealers based in massage parlors in the Pan Ran area. He later graduated to kidnapping and torturing members of the criminal underworld, often using a blowtorch or bolt cutters to remove the toes of his victims as an incentive for them to produce enough money so that Reed would let them leave alive. I'm not going to blame him for this. 
I'm not. <laughs> if you're going to be a criminal hood rat shitter, shithole, you know. Yeah. I'm, you know, sh- karma, as far as I'm concerned. But blowtorch and bolt cutters. Look, who knows what, who, who knows <laughs> what he based his, you know, prerequisites on kidnapping this person. You know, that's fair. Reed spent only 13 months outside of prison between the ages of 20 and 38, having been convicted of crimes including armed robbery, firearm offenses, assault, arson, impersonating a police officer, and kidnapping. <laughs> I mean, this kid just escalated. Yeah. Well, that escalated quickly. Correct. While in Pentridge's Prison H Division in the late 1970s, he launched a prison war. I don't know why I'm not surprised <laughs> to hear this. I mean... He literally has committed so many crimes and was torturing people. Why wouldn't he? Yeah. Okay. Around this time, Reed had a fellow inmate cut both of his ears off to be able to leave H Division temporarily. And, like, if you look at pictures of him online, he looks weird. Doesn't have any ears. It's funky. I mean, I, I mean, we're not talking Van Gogh here, people. We're looking at someone who's like, this is what I'm going to do for this scenario to happen. Yeah. In his biography, Reed claimed that he was uh, was to avoid an ambush by other inmates by being transferred to a mental health wing, but his later work state that he did so to win a bet. I don't know about that. I would not be betting nobody. My ears, correct. <laughs> I kind of need those. <laughs> I like music too much. Reed was stabbed by members of his gang in a sneak attack when they felt that his plan to cripple every other inmate in the division to win the gang war in one fell swoop was going too far. Oh, so we're telling, we're saying prisoners have morals? Well, apparently he do. His gang did. <laughs> Another theory is that James Jimmy Longin, a friend of Reed, with Patrick Blue Barnes, wished to benefit from a contract put on Reed's head by the Painters and Dockers Union. And he lost several feet of intestine during that attack. Oh, okay, well. Yeah. Once he got out of prison, he went on the TV series Tough Nuts and spoke about his mid-1980s to early 1990s rivalry with Alphon Gangatino. Is that a, someone important in Australia? I think he was like a gang leader. Okay. Explained that he had had a disagreement with Gangatino regarding an elderly neighborhood hero whom Gangatino admired. It is alleged by Reed that Gangatino burst open a toilet cubicle door with a number of associates and began a serious assault on Reed, who made his escape. Okay, well, I mean... Talk about getting caught with your pants down. <laughs> <laughs> In 1992, Reed was convicted of shooting Sidney Michael Edwin Collins in the chest. The incident took place in Reed's car, which was in the driveway of Collins' residence in Avondale, Tasmania. The bullet was recovered from the backseat of the vehicle, and Collins named Reed as the shooter. Pleading not guilty, Reed was convicted of committing an unlawful act intended to cause bodily harm, a downgraded charge from attempted murder and sentenced as a dangerous criminal to indefinite detention. Well, that was wise. Yeah. Because he is a dangerous criminal. Yeah. I mean, if he's tried to start a whole Gang war prison, prison war <laughs> th- and cut his own ears off, this person has no value. And then got stabbed in the stomach, lost some intestines. Right, but he has no value in other people's lives. Oh, no, absolutely not. An appeal against the convention was rejected by the Court of Criminal Appeal on August 24th, 1993. Good job, you. A second appeal against the sentence was argued on 28th of February, 1994, and it was rejected on March 10th, 1994. Again, good job, you. And a subsequent review of the Dangerous Criminal Declaration on July 18th, 1997, it was overturned. Okay, well, that was bad. Yep. And then he was granted parole in early 1998 and regained his freedom. The missing ears was the sign, <laughs> folks. In t- uh, 2002, Reed was again questioned over the disappearance of Sidney Collins, who is still on the Australian missing persons list after going missing under suspicious circumstances. So this is another victim, correct? Yep, it's a different one. Is This is a female? Nope. Guy. Okay, was he a rival gang member? Nope. Just some random dude. Some rando? Yep. Some Aussie rando? Yep. Okay. Reed admitted to having murdered Collins in his last broadcast interview before his death on the 60 Minutes program aired on October 20th, 2013. Oh, so he held out? Yep, he held out. But he did he die in prison or did he give an interview? So he got into prison, out of prison, in prison, out of prison, and then did a bunch of weird, crazy shit while he was out. Okay. Reed expressed no remorse for killing Collins, alleging that he was stupid for allowing Reed to shoot him on two occasions with his own gun. So he's trying to suggest that 
they, this was an arrangement. Yeah. Like, hey, I, I'm i Sydney, and I want my friend Reed to shoot me twice? Apparently. It was his own gun. And that he was stupid for doing so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> also in the 60 Minutes interview, he discussed the 1971 shooting of union boss Desmond Costello, the 1974 suicide of child sex offender Reginald Isaacs, and the 1987 shooting of Siam Okerzam, also known as Sammy the Turk. Okay, so let's, let's back up a little bit. <laughs> what does he have to do with the union? You mentioned this is like twice now. Was he was he was his gang violating some union rules here? So they were. Um, it was the Pacific Union, and they were like the railroad. No, the Painters and Dockers Union. So they were basically just kind of like robbing their shipments and. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Messing up with their. Stuffs. So they were like motherfucker stop. Yeah. Okay. He claimed to have been involved in the killing of 19 people and the attempted murder of 11 others. In 1998, he turned up drunk to a live television show hosted by Ellie McFeast, and, to the outrage of many viewers, gave a colorful account of feeding a man into a cement mixer. Okay. <laughs> so, he's got no boundaries. None. Like, he's Absolutely like, not. here's how you do this. Yeah. He, he's kind of, he's trying to be an influencer before they were influencers, it sounds like. Yep. Okay. In another interview, he was quoted as saying, well, Wait, 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 I have a question for you. Yes. Why is he getting all these interviews? Uh, he's famous in Australia. Oh. Oh, trust me. There's some weird other shit that I'll get into. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm, I'm holding oh, yeah. on. Yeah. Reed was quoted as saying, look, honestly, I haven't killed that many people. Probably about four or seven, depending on how you look at it. Oh, so his numbers fluctuate. His numbers fluctuate. Because at first he was like 20, tried to kill 11, yeah. but now it's four to seven. And four to seven is like such a weird gap, too. Right. I mean, <laughs> not only is it uneven, but um, once you pass five, right? you should be counting. Right. Okay. In 2001, Reed was featured in an advertisement on behalf of the Pedestrian Council of Australia, warning of the dangers of drunk driving. What? You can find the He's a killer. You can find the commercial on YouTube. <laughs> I watched it. <laughs> this guy is a gang member. <laughs> he kills people, he, uh, you know, under friendly fire circumstances. <laughs> He's got beef with the union. He puts people in cement mixers. And he's your warning f against drunk driving. Yeah. Moral, um, just so morally upstanding. Correct. In 2005, he embarked on a tour of Australia performing a series of shows titled I'm Innocent with oh Mark. my God. With Mark Marco Jackinson, his manager, and later toured Sydney in a stage show with a new co star, former detective Roger the Dodger Rogerson. And throughout Australia with a comedian and friend, Doug Chappelle. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's famous. He did a tour. I didn't do it. I'm innocent. Is that, is that what you said? I'm innocent? Yeah, I'm innocent. He's missing ears, <laughs> folks. That's the sign. Oh, it gets even better. Okay. I In 2006, he appeared in another commercial speaking out against domestic violence. Oh, my God. <laughs> He kills people, shoots people. Yep. And I, I've seen that ad, too. And now he's like, don't do it. Don't be beating up your spouses. Right. While I'm missing ears and have big old scars all over myself from... Where I've been shanked. My gang activities. Right. This... I Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> Obviously, the anti-domestic people, how desperate are they? Oh, that's sad. Come on, Australia. Get your shit together. Thank you. <laughs> In March... 2006, he released a rap album. Oh, no, no, no. Entitled Interview with a Madman. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, Vina, it gets better. <laughs> it gets so much better. She's got a whole another page, guys. Oh, it gets so much better. In 2007, despite his apparent successes, he was forced to declare bankruptcy, which included a $80,000 credit card debt and a $140,000 in private loans to 12 different people. People gave him money? Yep. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about the missing ears anymore, but that is the red. F I don't even. I don't even. Oh, I was waiting to do this episode because I knew your reactions were going to be so good. Oh he made headlines once again on December 15th, 2008, after being questioned by police about an alleged incident in Johnson Street, Collingwood. 
stated he was attacked by a tomahawk-wielding man he had never met before. Because that's something that happens. I guess. He said, I ran into the panel beaters and grabbed a pipe. I said, come here now, and he jumped into a car and pissed off. (laughs) Reed suffered a minor injury to his arm after being hit with the blunt end of the tomahawk. He was questioned by detectives at Richmond Police Station before being released without a charge, and his alleged attacker has never been found. So, the tomahawk guy, because that's what people do. I don't, I'm, you know, no offense to Australia. I don't envision Australians walking around with tomahawks. Nope. Hawks, tomahawks. Yes. Either way, I still don't envision just it. open carry of a tomahawk. Right. <laughs> Right, right. Can still carry. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Well, in a Texas, you can do an open carry So basically, a sword. he's like some rando co- came at me. With a tomahawk. And he's missing. Yep. Dude, he's never been found. Amazing. Mm. This, this is like... The clencher? I love this fact about this man. He was an author of crime novels. No. Selling more than 500,000 copies of his work. Are you kidding me right now? I am dead like, serious. Is it like, I didn't do it, but if I did, this is how I would have done it? Oh, you, I'll get into it. Okay. His first book, Chopper from the Inside. Oh my God. <laughs> His self-revelation book? Was collected from letters he sent while incarcerated in Melbourne's Pentridge Prison and published in 1991. Oh my. Okay. It contains tales and anecdotes of his criminal and prison exploits. Further biographical releases followed in a similar vein. It was with Chopper 5, Pulp Faction, he began writing fictional tales based on his experiences in crime life. Is fictional in quotation marks? No. Mm. And this is the worst. Attempts were made to ban a children's book written by Reed. Oh my god! Titled Hookie the Cripple. No! (laughs) This guy... It's listed on Amazon. Uh, No! It's still around! (laughs) This you, killer you can't put buy out it. kid books? You can't buy it, but it is listed. Is it because it's Australian money? I Currency? Don't, I don't know, but I because I wanted to buy it. Just to Hooky read it. The... Hooky the cripple. <laughs> no. In later years, he made recordings of voice narratives, which also sewed well. Oh, Jesus. And I have all of his books. He, like, pre-podcast. <laughs> this is what this is. <laughs> and I have a list of all the books that he released. He released about one a year until 2011. So, Chopper, from the inside, in 1991. Chopper 2, Hits and Memories, in 1992. Oh my god, Hits and Memories. Chopper 3, How to Shoot Friends and Influence People, in 93. I said it! Chopper 4, For the Term of His Unnatural Life, in 94. Unnatural. He's admitting it, folks. Mm -hmm. Chopper 5, Pulp Faction, Revenge of the Rabbit Kisser and Other Jailhouse Stories. In the rabbit kisser? The rabbit kisser. Does that mean something in Australian? I, I have no idea. Our Aussie fans, if it does mean something. Please let us know. Thank you. <laughs> chopper 6, No Tears for a Tough Guy in 96. They're all <laughs> Chopper? <laughs> Most of them. Oh my God. Chopper 7, The Singing Defective in 97. The Singing Defective. Yep. Chopper 8, The Sicilian Defense in 98. I don't even know what that means. Chopper 9, The Final Cut in, two thousand, er, in 1999. Chopper Ten and a Half, The Popcorn Gangster in 2001. What does that even mean? <laughs> Are these books readily available? I believe so. I didn't look at all the other ones. I just looked for the children's book. <laughs> well, you know, I have no doubt if someone looked at eBay, even Australian Ooh. eBay, because you can. That's a good idea. I didn't I'm think about that. pointing it out there. I have things to do when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> She's all, I got a whole list. Yes. Hookie the Cripple, the grim tale of a hunchback who triumphs in 2002. The Adventures of Rumsley Rumsfeld in 2003. Chopper 11, Last Man Standing from Ex-Con to Icon in 2007. Oh my god. Mark Chopper Reed, One Thing Led to Another in 2010. And Mark Chopper Reed, Road to Nowhere in 2011. And where is he now? Dead. So, from your your count, he killed how many people? He stated that he killed 19. Because he fluctuated. Yes. But from my research, I found about, I think it was five or six confirmed. Okay. He got hepatitis C during his time in prison, possibly as a result of using shared razor blades. In March 2008, he revealed that he only had two to five years to live and required a liver transplant. However, 
He refused to agree to the procedure, stating that while a transplant would save him, he did not want one when an organ could be provided to someone else. Oh, so suddenly he's got fucking morals and values. Oh, yeah. and he's a saint and, oh, save somebody else. Right. April 2012, he was diagnosed with liver cancer and underwent surgery in July to remove tumors from his liver. And in late September 2013, he was admitted to the Melbourne Private Hospital in failing health. He died of the illness October 9th, 2013, aged 58, in Parkville, Victoria, at the Royal Melbourne Hospital. So was he single? Is he was he, married is... and he had kids. Oh. All this time? So he married his first wife during his first prison stint. During? During. So Australia has conjugal visits or yep. something of that? How did he meet her? Uh, I think they were pen pals while he was in prison. Okay. And then divorced her, married his second wife, and I believe they had a son together. Okay. But yes, thus ends the reign. Of Chopper? Of Chopper Reed. Okay. And his books. And wow. And TV appearances and interviews and ads. I don't understand why this person, who was once considered by the country mm-hmm. a dangerous criminal yep. become an icon. Yep. Released rap albums and books and did interviews and I gotta tell you the rap album. Really kind of fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the title, Interview with a Madman. Really Wow. Dude? So badass. Wow. <laughs> I I don't even know what to say to that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this one was a wild ride. <laughs> All right, so that is Mark Chopper Reed. Yeah. And and Sarah quite enjoyed it. I did, because I knew your reactions were going to be good, oh and God. I was correct. Okay, um, wow. Uh, yeah, I get on to business because I got nothing else to say. I'm just kind of... Stunned. I am. That's the word. <laughs> I... Have news for you. There is no way in hell, unless there's definite DNA proof of innocence, mm-hmm. that I would follow an a convict once deemed a dangerous person. Yeah. By the state. Or I, what do they have? Providences? They have states, I think, in Australia. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't matter. If once the government deems it, that's what you are. <laughs> Just, I'm going to pass on your uh, <laughs> your music there, buddy. Well, it's not that bad. There was a, I haven't done full research on him yet, but I can't remember what his name is off the top of my head, but he was a killer in South Africa, I think. He got out of, he murdered like 13, 14 people, got out of prison, because I think like the max sentence in Brazil was like 30 years or something at the time. Okay. And he does YouTube. Okay. Again, that's a pass for Vina. The bunny's got other shit to do. The fox is 100% okay watching it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's what you, what we have for you tonight on All the right. business. Facebook, 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 where the dark corners are, has a Facebook page. So if you like to share some creepy things, hear some creepy things, look at some creepy things, go ahead and send us a request on over to that Facebook page. And we don't, like, inundate people. It's, no. uh, in, in fact, the holidays kind of slowed us down a little bit mm-hmm. with everything that was kind of going on. But, I mean, maybe, maybe a post a day. Yeah, we try. So, right, it's not, yeah. we don't, we just. We, we don't, don't We don't spam your Facebook Correct, feed. yeah. Just occasionally we'll find cool things. We're like, hey, look at this. Correct, correct. Or this is funny. Right. Correct. <laughs> Which brings me to if you have a topic that you would like us to cover or a serial killer that you would like a Sierra to cover, send us an email at where the dark corners are, and that's plural at gmail.com. But uh, final thoughts? I have to go on eBay now and see if I can find those books. I have to tell you, maybe we'll have you when, when you come back, mm-hmm. and if you rent or one or two. I'll let you know. Yeah. I'll be... <laughs> Here, I just, (laughs) just, okay. All right, that's it. So until next time, please remember, 
Only the few can find the beauty in the darkness, which is why we hope to meet you where the dark corners are. <laughs>